Hello, true Kramers of YouTube and Instagram. How are you? Good, I hope. So listen, let's talk about a massacre, shall we? This is referred to as the Easter Sunday Massacre. This modest, plain-looking son of a bitch, well, his name is James Rupert. He was born on March 29th, that's my birthday, March 29th, 1934. Oh, you're a lot older than me. He didn't exactly have a wonderful upbringing. His mama would refer to him as a mistake because she wanted a daughter. His daddy was a bit of an asshole, treated him like shit, and he would give no love, no affection to any of his children, really. His dad, who was named Leonard, would die in 1947. And apparently there was no love lost. James's 14-year-old brother, Leonard Jr., well, he would essentially take over the role of man of the house. Now, Leonard Jr. would essentially take over the role of being an asshole to James. He constantly picked on him and treated him like garbage. James had a really rough school life. He just didn't really ever excel in the educational world. And by age 16, he actually tried to end his own life by hanging himself with a bedsheet. But he failed. James was also just a little bitty man. He topped out at 5 foot 6 inches and 135 pounds. As the years went on, James would begin to develop more and more hatred for his older brother, Leonard Jr. Jesus, his, his life never gets better here. So, James also flunked out of college, while Leonard Jr. thrived in college. And he got a degree in electrical engineering. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. James had very, very few girlfriends in his life. Well, Leonard would steal one of them, married her, and then they had eight kids together. Jesus. James was just not destined for mm, anything. By 1975, Leonard Jr. was thriving with a wonderful job, a beautiful big family, and James, well, he was unemployed and living with mom. Oh boy, okay. James also owed a large amount of money to Leonard Jr. because James borrowed a whole huge sum of cash after losing a bunch of money in the stock market crash. His mother was then pissed off at him because he couldn't keep a job. He was always drunk, and so she said, I'm going to evict you. His own mother was evicting him from their home. And this would finally be the boiling point for James. On March 29th, 1975, ooh, I would be born 10 years later. Anyway, witnesses saw him shooting a 357 Magnum, and they saw this on the Great Miami River, which was in Hamilton, Ohio, which by the way is where the story takes place. He then went out to a cocktail lounge where he had a few drinks, complained about his mother, and said, you know what, I need to take care of this problem. He left. Then he came back and the bartender asked him, have you taken care of the problem? He said, no, not yet. And he was at the bar until 2.30 in the morning. The following day, which was Easter Sunday, Leonard Jr. would bring his wife and the eight kids to his mother's house, which is also where James lives, which is located on 635 Minor Avenue. The entire morning and early afternoon, James was upstairs sleeping off his drunkenness. The kids were playing, they were looking for Easter eggs. The family was having a good little time. Around 4 p.m. that day, he loaded his 357 Magnum. He also loaded two different 22 caliber handguns and a rifle. And as everyone was having a good time, he walked into the kitchen and James would open fire. He first shot and killed his brother, and then his brother's wife, and then he shot and killed his own mother. His nephew David and two of his nieces, Teresa and Carol, were also in the kitchen when he shot and killed them too. And if you look up here, you can see the ages of these people. He then went to the living room, shot and killed his niece Anne, and then the four remaining nephews that were still alive, Leonard III, Michael, Thomas, and John. John being the youngest at four years old. This is a crime scene photo from the living room where you can see one of his handguns. So what James would do first is he would shoot them either in the leg or the knee to disable them. And then he would kill them by shooting them in the head or in the heart or both. 
he murdered 11 people in five minutes. This is a scene from the kitchen where you can kind of see a body in the background. James sat his happy ass down. He felt relief, I guess. And he just chilled for three hours. And then he was like, you know what? I should probably call the police. So he did. And then he turned himself in. He was just calmly sitting outside the front door when the police got there. The police were horrified when they saw the crime scene. Not just the carnage of the bodies themselves, but the amount of blood that was just pouring everywhere. They refer to it as a slaughterhouse. And as a matter of fact, the current owner of the house, because yes, it's still up, you know, which is people refer to as the murder house. I can figure out why, but it does give me some American Horror Story vibes, and this house must be insanely haunted. But during this massacre, there was so much blood, and it was just pouring down everywhere. It seeped in between the floorboards. And, you know, it was all cleaned up, of course, but some of that blood still remains. This is actual blood stains from the massacre, and this is 40 some odd years later. That is, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could live in the house with that there. That would just be like way too foreboding for me. But James was obviously arrested and he was charged with 11 different counts of aggravated homicide. But when police got him to the station, he didn't want to talk. He refused to answer any questions and he was making it pretty apparent that he was planning to plead insanity. Which then, if he was found not guilty on account of being insane, at that time he could have still technically inherited the $300,000 inheritance money. In his original trial, um, he had a panel of three judges, which all found him guilty of all 11 counts. And then he was sentenced to life in prison. But they would declare a mistrial in the end. Because of where he lived, he felt he did not get a fair trial. So he was tried in a court 125 miles away. And he was found guilty again and was sentenced to 11 consecutive life sentences. James appealed that, and he won his appeal, and he got a third trial. His new lawyer got him all sorts of great psychiatric, you know, uh, experts. And believe it or not, in this third trial, he was only found guilty of the murder of his brother and his mother. He was found not guilty on all nine other murders on account of insanity. So he was sane to kill his brother and mom, but then suddenly he went insane and killed everyone else and then went back to being sane. He was given two life sentences, which would be served consecutively, but he was given opportunities to get parole. Why? He was eligible for parole in 1995, but he didn't get it. He then tried again in 2015. He failed again, good. He will likely never be released from prison. Like I said, the home still stands. The entire family was buried in Cincinnati, but people who have lived in this house have claimed to hear some very weird noises, screams and voices, the thumping of footsteps, people running down the stairs, doors slamming. Perhaps the house is just haunted by the horror that happened on Easter Sunday, 1975. Rest in peace.